From the Flying T Studio at Roxo Media House, this is Frogs Today with our special guests, TCU Athletic Director Jeremiah Donati, Head Basketball Coach Jamie Dixon, and Frog Football Head Coach Sonny Dykes, plus a preview of the NCAA Tournament with Jeff Wilson. And here's your host, the voice of the Frogs, Brian Estridge. Hello, Horn Frog family. I'm Brian Estridge, and for the next little while, we want to welcome you into Frogs today, to our new home. I say our home because not only is this mine, it's yours as well. For the next bit, we get to talk a little TCU athletics with you, and we've got some headliners lined up. Let me just tell you. Now, normally this show would, uh, well, we'd have a live band. We might have a student athlete stop by in a barber chair for a little interview. We'd have a guest or two, and we might even go to dinner one night. But today, it's all about the headliners. we got the big boys in town. Jeremiah Donati, the athletic director, is going to stop by. We've got Jamie Dixon, the head men's basketball coach. We also have Sonny Dykes, the head football coach of the Horned Frogs, who's going to visit with us. And you get to meet Jeff Wilson, who's part of our team with frogstoday.com. That's our brand new website that we encourage you to go to and check out, all right? While you're there, you're going to learn all about TCU Athletics. There's exclusive video opportunities for you there. There's also a little tab I want you to click on called the Lizard Lounge, all right? That's our community that we want you to be a part of. We're going to be diving into that community daily, all right? We'll stir up a little bit of trouble, but we'll keep the conversation going as well. Again, click on that Lizard Lounge once you sign up for frogstoday.com. So it's going to be a busy day as we kick off the first ever edition of Frogs Today right here. We're glad you've joined us. Why don't we start the day with everything going on around the world of TCU Athletics, and we do that at the Frogs Today News Desk. Next. Hey everybody, this is veteran Texas Rangers reporter Jeff Wilson inviting you to join me on rangerstoday.com, your one-stop shop for all things Texas Rangers. With exclusive videos, stories, news, and features, plus a podcast that showcases both major and minor league players as well as industry movers, shakers, and insiders, you won't find more in-depth coverage of the Texas Rangers than at rangerstoday.com. Subscribe for $5.99 a month or just $60 a year and enjoy everything Texas Rangers at rangerstoday.com. Rangers Today is a Roxo Media House production. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain, save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Frog fans, it's time for Friday Night Lights at the Carter. TCU football is set to host their spring scrimmage Friday, April 22nd. So bring out the entire family to enjoy this free event. Take advantage of happy hour specials at the concession stand all evening. And after the scrimmage, enjoy a fireworks show, followed by team autographs on the field. Gates open at 6. The scrimmage kicks off at 7. Can't make it to Amon G. Carter Stadium? No worries. You can also tune into ESPN Plus for a full telecast of the event. For more information, check out GoFrogs.com. From the news desk now here at Frogs Today and frogstoday.com, here's what's happening related to TCU athletics. Obviously, the big story of the day, TCU's men's basketball program headed to the NCAA tournament. They go in as the number nine seed to face the Seton Hall Pirates out of the Big East. 
They won 21 games this year. A couple of big wins down the stretch. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on in the show. The Big 12, by the way, places 10, uh, six teams, I should say, six of the 10 uh, in the uh, NCAA tournament, including two number one seeds, Baylor and Kansas. They'll be in Fort Worth. Frogs facing the Pirates, as we mentioned. Their head coach, of course, is Kevin Woolard, the son of the longtime college basketball coach, Ralph Willard. He spent many a year at Louisville under Rick Patino, who is his mentor. This game, by the way, is going to tip at 7 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Central on Friday night. Winner faces the winner of the number one seed, Arizona, versus a play-in game winner that will happen on the West Coast as well. By the way, one other note out of the Big 12 tournament from Kansas City, Mike Miles named all Big 12 tournament. He's the first Horn Frog to ever have that honor. TCU baseball completed a sweep of the Army Black Knights over the weekend. A pair of walk-offs in the first two games. Frogs win the third one as well. The scrappy Army Black Knights hung with TCU throughout the weekend. Frogs get to open conference play this coming weekend against the Baylor Bears down in Waco. Caitlin McNabb's her name. She carded a final round 567 as the number 26 TCU women's golf team closed play with a tie for fourth at the Clover Cup in Mesa, Arizona. This was a great field, by the way. There were nine programs ranked in the top 50. Horn Frog shot an even par 864, by the way, for the 54 holes to finish in fourth place. TCU women's rifle team successful again in defending their Air Rifle National Championship. That took place last weekend in Colorado Springs. Fourth time in program history now for the Horn Frogs to take home the Air Rifle title. You combine that with the small bore score and the Frogs finished second overall in the country. Frogs fired three of the top 10 air rifle scores, by the way, on the day to claim that championship. The number three beach volleyball team won its 14th and 15th uh, matches of the season to stay undefeated. They won the Outrigger Queens Cup Championship on Saturday night in Manoa, Hawaii. Not a bad trip for the beach volleyball team. Behind three top three finishes, the TCU men's track and field team finished 10th at the NCAA Indoor Championships. They get that done with just three athletes participating, by the way. Anyway, finished top 10 in the NCAA in track. And because we cover everything TCU related, got to go to the notes here on this one from frogstoday.com. Two TCU feature baton twirlers dominated at their regional competition over the weekend, bringing home a lot of hardware with top honors in the collegiate event. The contest held at Eaton High School in Fort Worth this past weekend brought together elite twirling athletes from a three-state region, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas all involved. KK Tunnel and Stephanie McBurnett swept the number one and two spots in multiple categories, bringing home the regional titles to TCU. Nice job, ladies. A lot more still to come on Frogs Today from frogstoday.com. We're here at the Flying T Club Studios and we visit with our headliners coming up next. What do you call a Fort Worth centric podcast featuring guests of international, national and local fame? Fortitude FW. Why catch the latest episode? Because every guest has a story to tell. Join hosts J.W. Wilson and Britton Payne every Friday for the latest stories from noted Fort Worthians in business, sports, lifestyle, entertainment, law enforcement, politics, and well, you get the idea. Fortitude FW, where the stories never die. Listen anywhere you get your podcast or at FortitudeFW.com. Fortitude FW is a Roxo Media House production. Frog fans, TCU Baseball introduces the Frog Flex Pack. This new addition this season gives fans the flexibility and power to decide what games they want to attend. The TCU Baseball Frog Flex Pack gives fans 10 vouchers to redeem for GA tickets at any home game this season for a low price of just 80 bucks. That's right, $80. Be sure to purchase your very own Frog Flex Pack today. Call 817-257-3764 or visit GoFrogs.com. Frogstoday.com is the ultimate TCU sports fan community. Members enjoy exclusive content from inside the locker room, feature presentations, access to athletes, coaches, and alumni that are making headlines, and a live show featuring Brian Estridge. Join us and an interactive sports community full of Horned Frog fans now at Frogstoday.com. Frogs Today is a Roxo Media House production. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event-based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. 
These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Welcome back into the Flying Tea Club studios. I'm Brian Estridge as we kick off our first ever edition of Frogs Today from frogstoday.com. We have a very special guest, uh, really, who kind of helped make this happen for us as well. The athletic director, Jeremiah Donati. Welcome to the show. Jeremiah, come on out. Man. Good to be with you. Good to see you, bro. Yeah, good. good to you. be here. Thanks for being our first guest, too, man. Of course. You know, that's, uh, there should be a trophy or, you know, uh, maybe a Richard's Rainwater or something for that, you know? we should. This is impressive. You guys didn't waste much time. No, not much time and uh, not much money either. That's the way it happens. Uh, I, I want to dive right into um, uh, the momentum that is happening right now at TCU. I mean, you, you feel it, obviously, with the men's basketball program, but it's more than than just that. There's kind sort of a groundswell around the department right now, isn't there? Yeah, there's a lot of energy. Uh, like you said, uh, a lot of a lot of just, uh, you know, you just kind of feel like a culture change yeah. a little bit. And I think some of that is coming out of the pandemic. Um, you know, for, for uh, over a year, we were sent home. And, um, you know, you can just feel the timing of it, right? With a lot of success we've had with the programs, uh, I think people just really wanted this. You know, they wanted to be around. They wanted something to be happy about and excited about. And, and our teams have really delivered. And so um, we've got a lot of really positive momentum in football. Obviously, we're not in season, uh, but it's kind of started with that. You've seen it kind of permeate to some of the other programs and across the department and across the campus. So yeah, really, just really excited about where we're at right now. Let's talk basketball, since that is top of mind yeah. for a lot of folks. And, yeah. and this team right now, number nine seed, headed, headed off now to take on Seton Hall mm -hmm. in San Diego. I like the matchup. I, I love the fact that you get to go to San Diego where there are a ton of TCU alums. Jamie Dixon's parents are there. I love that. Uh, tell me what you thought when you saw that come up on the board. Yeah, well, I thought, uh, honestly, I thought maybe we played up to a seven seed. Um, and then if you're the eight or the nine, there's really no practical difference. Uh, but no, I like the matchup. And uh, like you said, being in San Diego is big for us. We got a lot of alums, a lot of parents. Uh, when we performed out in, in uh, Southern California, you think the Rose Bowl, some of the baseball series we've had out there, we've done really well uh, as far as drawing. So uh, I expect we'll have a big crowd. We've already had a number of people interested. In. Um, so, you know, airline flights are, are pretty high because gas prices are way up. <laughs> so, uh, but people are trying to find their way out there. So I couldn't tell you, you know, right now our, our team's breaking down Seton Hall and the other two teams, uh, you know, the other uh, teams on the other side of the bracket. So. Um, but look, the last time we won a tournament game, our head coach was playing in that game. Right. So we're going to focus on one game and uh, Seton Hall, and then we'll, we'll go from there. But no, I'm, I'm really excited about that matchup. Friday night, late night game, too. It's really the, the last one of the first round, essentially. Yeah, it's the uh, last one. So, uh, you know, save the best for last. Yeah. And uh, it's 7 o'clock local time. It'll be 9 o'clock here. But I, I suspect... People here in Fort Worth will, will stay up for that I one. Think they'll, I think they'll make it for that yeah. one. A couple other things going on. Obviously, uh, uh, men's tennis with the indoor title. They, you had to be proud of what they were able to accomplish. Yeah, you know, David uh, and his team have been knocking on the door now for, for years. And so to, to break through, and you, boy, you talk about a murderer's row yes. of who they played to get there. I mean, this was not, uh, this kind of snuck up on people just because you don't, you don't feel like you're in tennis season until you get to the outdoors, but the indoor season, um, is, is, is half the season, right? And so um, they just, boy, they took Seattle by storm and they just had, there was never a doubt, right? Uh, David, I think, was pretty nervous, but I would tell you that going into that final, we just felt like we just had so much momentum that we weren't going to be denied. And so really happy for them. In fact, later today, we're going to celebrate their national championship. One of the things the pandemic, I think, has taught all of us is you got to celebrate the wins. Yes. You know, you just don't know when these moments are going to come around again and when sports was 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 taken from us uh for so long it felt like you know we were just dying to get to, to get back to moments like this and so we're gonna have a big deal over on campus to celebrate those young men and that uh, unbelievable accomplishment you know you uh, you think about the weekend as well we, we just went through and you had a uh, you, you had your rifle team excel uh again that's kind of a yeah. kind of old hat, hasn't it? Uh, and women's golf as well. I mean, had a, had a great tournament. I mean, that goes back to that groundswell of momentum you're yeah. in the middle of. Well, women's golf, baseball, uh, beach volleyball out in Hawaii. Yeah. You know, comes back with a, won a huge tournament. They're undefeated. You know, and they're quietly, um, you know, they're 15 and 0 on the season. I'll just I'll, I'll uh, talk about them for a second. You know, we started the program seven years ago. Right. 
you know, now they're ranked, they're going to be ranked number two in the country. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal. So Hector and his, his team have, have come a long way in a short amount of time. But no, you're, it's kind of hard to keep up with. You know, I, I try to promote all of our accomplishments, uh, track and field and, and swimming had big weekends. I try to promote all of our accomplishments on social media and give people the, you know, the, the uh, you know, pat on the back, so to speak. But sometimes when it's a good problem to have, I'm not complaining. Uh, when you have such a big weekend like that, it's hard to get around everybody uh, expeditiously. So anyhow, um, no, big, big weekend, and it seems lately like we've had a lot of those. I want to touch on two other points before we let you get out of here. One is the off season, uh, and I'm going to call it the off season. It wasn't really that, but you, you, you had to make a change in football. You had to make a change in volleyball. Tell me what the, the hardest part of that is for you as an athletic director. Well, the personal side of it, probably, because you know you spend more time with them than your own family, and, and you know what their, their, their hopes, dreams, aspirations, fears are. You get to understand those things, and then when you have to have, make a tough decision like that, um, you realize that you're affecting you know, their, their livelihood and, and their careers, and so you, know, you don't make those decisions unless you're absolutely certain you're doing the right thing for TCU. And so, um, you know, that's, but that's the hard part is that, you know, in, in Gary and Jill's case, you know, those are two, two people that have been great colleagues yeah. and, and friends. And, um, you know, that's they're, they're, that part is sad um, to, to think of not having those moments with them. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you've got to do what's right for the program. I would think even harder maybe be the fact that the, the collateral damage that comes of that, meaning you, you have assistant coaches, you have yeah. other staff members who did nothing wrong, who uh, obviously, but were just part of it. And, and I know how close you get to those people. That to me would seem like it would be. Yeah, it is. And you know what's interesting, and just take football for a moment, um, you know, we haven't had a coaching change in over 22 years. Right. And so that's really unique. In fact, I think only Iowa is the only school that's, that's had a head coach that was there longer. Most programs, in fact, all programs have had one, two, three, four, five coaching turnovers. And so this has just been so unusual yeah. for us. We have one person on staff who was here the last time we had a different head football coach. Right. Think about that. So it's just a lot. It just, you know, these, a lot of those assistant coaches had really become kind of family yeah. almost. And so, yeah, that's the hard part of our business, you know, of any business is, is when you have to make changes like that. Um, and you know, because you get to know their kids and you get to know their families, and so um, you know, but really excited for for uh, you know a lot of them have gone to, to bigger up or, or not bigger, but other opportunities yeah. and, and and big opportunities for them, and so really excited um, for them and, and for those, and you know, they'll always be a part of our part of our Horn Frog family. And here, and speaking of family, we'll, we'll ramp with this. When it starts rolling, when you got when you got the right people in place, and there are no issues. And there are no problems. You can go back to donuts on Sundays with your daughters, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is very important to you. Yeah. I know. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, people, work-life balance is one of the most overrated terms used out there because there, there is never a balance. It's yeah. always out of balance. Right. And so maybe, uh, maybe, that, maybe those two out of balances somehow come back and, and find a balance. But for me, you know, when, I, when I'm uh, on the clock, so to speak, which is basically all, all the time, time. You know, but you try to be present, you know, when you're home. Um, and so, you know, the donuts, uh, I've, I've gotten a lot of, uh, I, I think I've made the donut shop. Yeah, I think you've done okay with that. Yeah, Because yeah. I do get people that will reach out on social media. They'll say, hey, tell me about this place. And I'll say, it's awesome. You're right. Or they'll, or they'll say, hey, I got a donut shop for you on the other side of town. I'll say, right. no, I'm, we're, we're committed you're here. You're loyal. Yeah, we're, we're loyal here. <laughs> so, you know, who knows, maybe in this world, maybe that'll, that'll translate to an NIL deal for one of our student athletes one day but now that's that's important in fact San Diego my kids are actually out there for spring break uh, with my wife and so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them for a little while before yeah. we tip it off on Friday night all right Friday night frogs yeah. in Seton Hall Jeremiah Donati thank you very much for joining us oh my pleasure you know what I, I got a whole list of other stuff I want to get into we'll save it for the next time okay. how about that sounds, sounds NIL good. transfer portal nothing nothing big you know we'll get into that later I on. hadn't heard of those yeah exactly we'll look forward to hearing your thoughts on that all right coming up next. thanks for having me yes coming up next we got a couple of coaches that are going to stop by we'll start with the head basketball coach of the Horn Frogs Jamie Dixon he's next as Frogs Today continues in a moment on her new video podcast show Curb Appeal TV personality Kirby Schnoor talks about everything that appeals to her most with her best friend and City Boots owner and founder Lizzie Bentley 
Joined by their friends and special guests, they cover fashion, food, music, art, and Western culture while giving you a behind-the-scenes look at their lives, favorite places, and things to do in Fort Worth. Curb Appeal drops new episodes weekly at CurbAppealShow.com or anywhere you get your podcasts. Curb Appeal is a Roxo Media House production. Frog fans, it's time for Friday Night Lights at the Carter. TCU football is set to host their spring scrimmage Friday, April 22nd. So bring out the entire family to enjoy this free event. Take advantage of happy hour specials at the concession stand all evening. And after the scrimmage, enjoy a fireworks show, followed by team autographs on the field. Gates open at 6. The scrimmage kicks off at 7. Can't make it to Amon G. Carter Stadium? No worries. You can also tune into ESPN Plus for a full telecast of the event. For more information, check out GoFrogs.com. Welcome back into the Flying Tea Club Studios. I'm Brian Estridge as we continue here with Frogs today. Special thanks to Jeremiah Donati for stopping by. And now we want to welcome in the next special guest, uh, a guy who's got it going on right now, folks. Jamie Dixon, the head men's basketball coach at TCU. Would you welcome him to Frogs today? Come on in, coach. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Nice to be yeah, thank you, man. This will be, you know, we'll show you, we'll show you the rest of the place later. Yeah. Where's my room? Exactly, exactly. Well, um, Jeremiah was home with us just a second ago, and he said, he brings up a good point. He said, the last time TCU won a game in the NCAA tournament, our coach was playing. Um, to get your team back to postseason like this, that's extra special to you, isn't it? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, that's been, our, that's been our goal. That was what it was. So it's, uh, um, that was what we anticipated doing, and that's what we've done. So, you know, we battled through our league and battled through the non-conference and uh, put ourselves where we we're supposed to be. But, yeah, I know, I know the uh, – I know the history of the last, I can't do anything about the last 40 years. I mean, I, want, I, I keep getting, that always is brought up and we've been in postseason, obviously. I think every year you had to, could have a postseason. Right. I guess we didn't make it last year, but uh, um, you know, we're, uh, the, the NCAA is the, turn, is, is the goal. We've won an NIT championship up the semis the other year, but uh, you know, we, we, want, we want to win games. We want to win games in the tournament. And uh, I think we're in a position to do that, but we got a good, tough opponent in Seton Hall. I, I wrote down a word to kind of describe what postseason is. And, and, and postseason to me is kind of validation. It's validation for all the hard work that you put in, for the culture that you build, for the, for the kind of men you bring into the program, and it, and it validates that you're, you're on the right track, doesn't it? Well, I mean, I, again, it's, you know, I mean, you can, it's so, it's so hard. I yeah. mean, it's, uh, it's uh, hard to make, there's, there's 350 teams, you know, there's 64, 68 spots in the NCAA tournament, and, po and, the, and, the, uh, big t uh, and then the NIT's 32 teams, and then there's, you know, how they do the bids is, you know, makes it a completely different deal. So, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, it's just different in, in, than other sports, and, um, so it's it's a battle, and uh, certainly uh, you know I know what our history is, but um, you know we're not we're not about the past. We're, we're we've we've made uh, significant improvements, and uh, you know the, the improvement the next move we got made is win some games in the NCAA tournament. You are uh, in, in being around you. I, the th one of the things I love about you is you're an optimist, mm -hmm. uh, and during the the stretch where things were tough in the Big Twelve. Did you ever consider your, hey, we're on the bubble or we're not going to get in? Or were you, did you always think this was a tournament team? Yeah, no, I, I, I did. And, you know, that was the thing we sat down with our guys initially and said, hey, none of you guys were in the tournament. Micah was the one guy that had been right. in the tournament. And, you know, but I also pointed out that, you know, Texas was picked number one and none of those new guys had been in the tournament either. And they were, like, considered first year, you know, uh, all league players. And, and, and a lot of the same thing with the tech guys, too. So, and they were picked high. And, and, uh, uh, and Baylor's guys were transfers too that had played it uh, hadn't pl played in the NCAA tournament most of them um, so you know that that's I wanted to address that but also say hey we're all in the same boat it's who comes together the best and and, and who who makes that uh, uh, who, who makes that commitment and who makes those sacrifices so that was the message we got across to our guys and you know you say that and we get two guys that go down the start of the year who we really thought might be our two starters uh, or two of our starters, right. to be honest with you. Uh, uh, Max, we thought might be more of the three. Um, so, you know, you adjust again as, as things come down and, and they're out for the year and, and then you have uh, Damien step up and, and Fran's healthy all year for the first time and so you got a nice guard rotation and, and, and Chuck comes out of nowhere for us. So, you, you know, you, you try to predict and try to plan out, but, you know, things, things, uh, uh, you know, things like Chuck becoming the player they became in, in year five of his career and, and staying healthy was a, was a big step for us too. You, you've made a point of talking about how much you like this basketball team. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, you made a conscientious effort when you, when you recruited new players that you recruited character too. Yeah, no, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we always do that, and sometimes you, know, you may miss, and, and maybe it's just the kid that doesn't work out for whatever reason. Injuries are a big part of it, playing time, and, and the immediate, immediate gratification, that's, the, that's the, really the, the component now that really uh, changes. Who's going to battle through it, you know, and, and that's the real thing that we're going through in college athletics, uh, for the most part. Basketball is even a whole nother level um, because of the culture, but uh, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a great group. You know, what, I, what, what makes this team different is there's so, such an outgoing bunch, and that's where you see where the connection with the students, and we're having 3,000 students. Imagine having 3,000 students at about, I mean, we couldn't, I didn't see 3,000 at a football no, game. No, I no. Mean, on a Saturday, we got middle of the week games, and, there, and, and there's 2,000 students showing up, and I just, you know, the professors are a little mad because they're not showing up for classes, <laughs> but uh, um, it, it's, uh, it's, they've really connected, they're outgoing. You know, we did the Christmas tree lighting, and I was like, you know, we did Special Olympics, and I'm like, you know, I'm getting there at you know, time, and they're already there early 15 minutes beforehand. I mean, like, that's the kind of the different things that we have saw this year, and they, they enjoyed, I guess, Eddie was at the baseball game yep. on Saturday. I was trying to, I was thinking about going out there. I thought it was too cold, but, uh, and I was <laughs> preparing, but, uh, uh, but he was out there, and I guess a couple other guys. So, I mean, like, you know, that's, that stuff's not normal, yeah. and uh, they, they enjoy it. They enjoy uh, campus, and um, and I think that's great because I think that's something that, you know, we've kind of um, for, you know, it's something probably I think TCU is, is, has lacked. Yes. And, and uh, you know, and obviously our guys are from, um, you know, we, we've got a unique uh, uh, culture as, as far as the campus and our makeup. And, and I think it's just great that our guys are just uh, interacting and involved with, uh, with everybody on campus. And they're in at classes and engaged. And, you know, they're, 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 uh, it's a, I think that makes this a really special group. Now the attention turns, obviously, to Seton Hall. Uh, they're coming up on Friday night, late yeah. night game in San Diego. Kevin Willard's the coach. What, what do we know about him? Well, I was watching them last night, and uh, obviously we got the tape. And, uh, but I'd seen them before and, and know Kevin, and they're really old. They have like six grad, you know, fifth-year, sixth-year guys, yeah. and like everybody, it seems. And, I, you know, I, I, we got older this year, but yet we're still the youngest team of teams I look in the tournament. But um, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, sit, we, someone used a phrase kind of similar to Texas Tech, a lot of mid, uh, mid-sized guys. Yeah, six, 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 seven. Yeah. Um, kind of go mid-post. Um, not a great shooting team, but athletic and guys that can score uh, in the mid post and around the basket. So uh, I think that's a probably a good thing. They'll, they'll play a little zone, which you know we haven't seen at all this year, and, and our league doesn't play. It's like a it's like a uh, you know a, a penalty if you, if anybody plays zone in this league. So um, so that's that we'll see a little bit of that. Kevin always played the two three zone, so. Um, it's similar. To, uh, I remember it. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a team that's uh, very old. Uh, I, I think it's six grad transfers. I looked at it. And I'm like, there was a number of guys that I recruited when I was at Pitt that are we're going to be playing against. That's that's so a while that, ago. That, yeah, that, yeah. So that's that gives you an idea. <laughs> All right. So final thought here, and, and you never try to make it about you. I'm going to make it about you for 30 seconds. You got a chance to play in San Diego. Your folks are there. Yeah. Are they going to get a chance to come to the game? No. No, they, they're, I talked to my dad last night. They're just, my mom's in the hospital. Right. Um, and uh, she's been in and out for you know, a couple of years now. So, uh, so no, my sister, I don't think. So, I, I you know, tough yeah. question. Yeah. Long time to ask yeah. it. Yeah. But, yeah, we got them. Uh, they're there. So, uh, but I was in friends. Just yeah. Oh, yeah. Just talking to some as they uh, fly it out. But, you know, yeah. again, it's, uh, we, won't, we won't know. Because I, I knew that if, if, if TC was in Pittsburgh or in San Diego, your ticket list was going to be bigger, right? Either yeah. way. Yeah, no, it's, uh, um, it, it, it's uh, I, and I thought for some reason I felt I was going to get one of those. I don't yeah. know why it was, but I, I felt it was going to be one of those things. And, uh, uh, but yeah, they're, uh, um, um, they're, uh, uh, we'll see, we'll see how, I'm just excited for our fans. Right. I know we, we, you know, we play in Orange County and we play in LA and, you know, that's been our thing. You know, Pitt was get to play in New York. That was yeah. going to be our thing, and that became our thing. And it was really something that took off, and you know, it was really something we built. And and, and playing out in, in Southern California has is, is, is been our thing too. And we saw with the number of kids we had at the uh, Orange County game, and um, so this one I think is really good. I, I like that it's Friday night too for yeah. that reason as well. So I think that might get the Orange County and the 
We want San Diego kids. I'm sure Owen will be there. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure he will. He better yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. former Horned Frog. He better be there wearing the purple. Hey, honored that you came by to see us well, on this first edition. Uh, and I know I speak for a lot of TCU fans. Uh, and, and a big thank you yeah. for getting us back to the tournament. Yeah. It'll be going to be a fun run. Yeah. And uh, Seton Hall is going to be a fun opponent. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, that's one of the that's a that's a big name in college basketball. We're going to play teams like that. Yeah, you no, know? it's a, it's a uh, they got a lot of history. And, yeah, uh, um, and Kevin's done a, a really good job there. I know we we, we played against him. Uh, first couple of years uh, uh, that he got the job, I was uh, was at Pitt, and yeah. uh, um, and now he's elevated the program over time and and, and done a really good job. And uh, um, and and they're in the kind of same. He he needs to win some. You know, he wants to win some tournament sure. games. They've been getting the tournament, and now they want to they want to win some games too. So. Um, so, uh, you know, someone's going to have to lose. All right, Friday night, it'll, it'll crank up. Uh, that'll be at uh, 9 o'clock Central Time, 7 o'clock Pacific Time. Horn Frogs in Seton Hall, the Pirates up next for TCU. But big thanks to Jamie Dixon for stopping by. Sonny Dykes, head football coach for the Horn Frogs, joins us next when Frogs Today continues in a moment. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. Every Sunday is Family Day at Lupton Stadium this season. Family Day includes dollar hot dogs, a super frog kid zone featuring face painters and inflatables, plus an ice cream helmet giveaway at the gates. After the games, the first 150 kids can run the bases and get autographs from the entire team. So grab the family. Come out every Sunday for Family Day at the ballpark. Presented by All Saints Episcopal School and Old South Pancake House. Back we come on frogstoday.com live here today at the Flying T Club Studios. Brian Estridge with you. Time now for our headliner. We've uh, waited long enough for this. If you would please welcome to our first ever edition of Frogs Today, the head football coach of the Horn Frogs, Mr. Sonny Dice. Coach. Hey, Brian. How are you, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Have a seat. Thank you. Welcome to the den. Glad to be here. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to hang out any day, just come on by. I will. I'll we're, stop by. We're doing something, and we, you know, we'll take care of you. The uh, I, I guess we we start with this. Um, I, I don't know if folks know this, but you're you're a big college basketball fan. You played baseball. Yep, yep. But you love college basketball. I do. Yeah, I love college basketball. I've got a I've got a connection, obviously, with my brother-in-law. He's now the head coach at UTEP yep. and was at Abilene Christian last year, and they were kind of the squad that knocked Texas out of the yes. NCAA tournament last year. And so he's moved on to UTEP. So I, I, you know, I kind of grew up in in. I, a pretty good basketball era at Texas Tech yep. back in the day with Bubba Jennings and Gerald Myers was the head coach oh, yeah. and they had some good teams in and um, you know so kind of grew up loving college basketball and then spent a couple of years coaching at Kentucky and that you know that, that was a blast to go to those games and I've just always enjoyed getting out and going to basketball games. I saw you and Coach Dixon in the green room earlier kind of chatting it up he's got a I, I like the matchup Seton Hall first yeah. round and then you, you then you get to face Arizona you know a little bit about those cats I mean that's that's big basketball country out there as well. It is yeah it, uh, you know the basketball team this year has been a blast to watch I mean they really have been fun a um, lot of athleticism on this year's uh, TCU team and you know a bunch of different guys that can score and you know fun fun team to watch so we've really enjoyed going to the games it's great for my family and myself to you know have a chance to get to meet some people you know we get to go um, you know, talk to folks before the game and sometimes at halftime. And it's just a, it's a good way to connect with people and obviously support Jamie and his program. He's done an unbelievable job and getting the team to the second NCAA tournament in his tenure. And, you know, I think his future is really bright. Do you, uh, do you feel settled in? I mean, or, or do you feel like you're settled in? Yet? Um, you know, I think, I think it's like anything else. I mean, you know, as my family gets settled in, I'll feel that way. And, I, and my kids and wife are very settled. Um, you know, for us, once we get on the field and start coaching football, that, that's when everything becomes normal. And so, you know, um, your first year, there's always all these challenges. I mean, just trying to get to know your players and recruit and just figure the way things work uh, out. But we've hit the ground running. You know, the transition has been really smooth, really simple so far. But, you know, to me, once we get on the grass and start coaching football, then it'll be it'll start to feel like home to me. You, you've been building that uh, staff and what a terrific staff you put together already. And it's interesting because we haven't had this around here in a while that, that there's been already a little bit of turnover. That tells me you're hiring the right kind of people, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, you hate to lose coaches, um, you know, especially guys that never even got to coach in a game or even right. really a practice for that matter. But I think it speaks highly of the group that we, we hired. I mean, we lost 
lost Chidera to you know the defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs, right. and then you know lost Rashad to the Super Bowl champions uh, L.A. Rams. <laughs> it's and hard so, to overcome. Yeah, it is. I mean, so both those guys had great opportunities. I was happy for them. They deserved it. They're both really um, exceptional young coaches, and you know our challenge is when you lose somebody at, at that caliber to go out and replace them, you know, with somebody as good or better. And so we're pretty far along in the process. I think you'll see us, you know, name a coach here pretty quickly. Um, you know, to replace Rashad, um, you know, felt like we did a really good job replacing Chidera with Jamarcus McFarland and just his recruiting ties and the way he's really connected with our players. I've been really impressed with our guys really like him. So, you know, when you lose guys, it's always a challenge, but at the same time, it's always an opportunity to shuffle some things around and, and try to improve. Another area that has seen a sort of a, a reorganization at TCU football is the strength and conditioning and nutrition side of things. Yep. This is really cutting edge what you're doing at TCU, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you've heard me say this before. I mean, there's really three three elements to, to building a successful football program. And, you know, it's building a great culture. Um, you know, it's acquiring talent through recruiting. But, you know, the biggest part of that probably is player development. You know, being able to bring guys in and bring them along um, and, and try to get the, the most out of them. And, you know, and, and what's exciting for me is just watching our team, just see those guys, you know, their bodies change, um, you know, they're starting to, you know, less body fat, more muscle, getting bigger, you start to see their backs start to widen out a little bit. And, and you know, and a lot of that's tied to uh, not only performance on the field, but also keeping guys healthy and keeping them at practice every day and, and you know, just keeping them, uh, keeping them going. Because, you know, when you're hurt, obviously you don't have an opportunity to practice. And when you don't have an opportunity to practice, you're not developing. And so, as we said earlier, player development is so important to us. And, you know, we have the best strength and conditioning coach in college football, without a doubt, Kaz Kazadi. And, you know, does a tremendous job getting guys bigger, faster, stronger. But he's the biggest culture builder in our program. And he does a tremendous job also of, of you know, creating an expectation within the strength and conditioning program and developing leadership. And all those things that you don't hear many people talk about that are really important to your football program. What are we, just over a week from spring ball starting? Is that a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. How excited are you? Very excited. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, look, it's been a long, long time coming, getting yeah. here. It seems like, you know, we had late, a late spring football intentionally this year. We wanted to give our guys a, a block of time to really develop in the weight room and get to know each other and, you know, do a lot of teaching before spring ball so we can make an easy transition. Um, but, you know, I'm excited. I mean, that's, this is what you what you wait for. I mean, you get, to, you get to go out there and you get to really find out what kind of football team we have. We think we have some ideas, you know, but we're not really sure until they go out there and they play football. At the end of the day, you know, you can be great lifting weights and you can be great running sprints and you can be great doing all these things. But if you can't put a cohesive team together and a team that can make each other better, then uh, you're not going to get what you want. You've, uh, you, you've hinted that the roster that we see today is not necessarily the roster that we will see come September 1. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, un unfortunately, in, in a lot of ways, and fortunately in some others, there's, that's college football today. You know, there's just a lot of movement, um, you know, especially when you have a coaching change. You know, when, when a new coach comes in, a new philosophy, that's always going to create some, uh, some uncertainty. And, and uh, you know, you're going to have some guys that are just not comfortable maybe with the expectations or just, you know, feel like they're getting left out from a scheme standpoint or whatever the case may be. Some of those guys will jump in the portal and it's the same old thing. What that does is create opportunities to go and add guys as well. And so, you know, we've lost some guys to the portal. I think that's been, you know, um, that's been really obvious to, to some people that we've lost some good players, but we've also been able to go out and, and replace them with really good players and some guys that we think fit and, you know, that fit our culture. Speaking of the portal, the other big topic, if you will, in college athletics is the NIL. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, we, we've partnered with the Flying Tea Club here uh, at Frogs today. You've embraced the NIL, and, and you view it as, hey, this is, this is with us. It's here to yep, stay. Yep. And so you might as well get out in front of it and embrace it and do what you can to help. Right? Yeah, look, I think it's like anything else. I mean, I'm for anything that improves the quality of life of our players. Yeah. And so, you know, these guys, uh, they make a lot of sacrifices. They spend a lot of time um, in football, I think uh, much more time than people realize. Uh, because a lot of our guys, obviously, we use a lot of their time in training, um, you know, in tutoring and strength and conditioning and practicing, doing all the stuff that we do. But then also these guys are going out on their own on the weekends and, and training with other guys. And so, you know, uh, being a college football player is a very, very difficult and time consuming um, job, really, in a lot of ways. And so, you know, I like it when those guys have an opportunity to go out and earn something for the amount of time that they contribute to our program. And, 
you know, when you look at it, a lot of guys can't do internships and do things that, that would allow them to have some opportunities that other students have because they're so busy. Right. And this is a way to, you know, to help those guys get jump started a little bit financially. As you uh, as you build this program, we'll let, we know how busy you are. We're gonna let you go. When you when you build this program and you're putting things in place, do you ever hear your dad's voice? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, I know I do sometimes for sure. Um, today actually is, it would have been his 84th birthday. Right, that's, uh, I was yeah. gonna bring that up. Yeah. Like, you beat me to the punch. My <laughs> final one. Okay. <laughs> but no, I, I wondered if you ever. Yeah. If, if you just hear him go, hey, Sonny, I'm, I don't know if I do that. Or... All the time. Yeah. I mean, I think you know. Uh, that happens to me quite often is, you know, you'll do something during the day and then you'll drive it home or you're laying in bed at night and you go, huh, you know, uh, I, we, we might want to rethink that, yeah. you know, or, or, and that happens to me all the time. I mean, look, we're going to make mistakes. There's going to be decisions that are made impulsively sometimes and emotional decisions and all that kind of stuff just because our business is that way. Uh, you have to make some really fast decisions. You got to decide uh, courses of action sometimes under a lot of stress and and sometimes when you have an opportunity to reflect on it you might say well I, I probably should have handled that a little bit differently and yeah. I'll do it I'll do it differently moving forward and you know and that to me is kind of where I hear my dad's voice going you know are you sure you want to do that or right. you might want to think about this and and uh, you know he was always pretty good about not telling me what to do but but telling me what to do in a really subtle way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there were always heads around huh? No doubt. April 22nd spring game Friday night under the lights what can fans expect? Well, I think the, the big thing for us, hopefully, is you're going to see a team that we roll out there, you know, everybody's going to go, okay, these guys know what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of, you know, playing fast and lining up co correctly and playing with good technique and fundamentals and, you know, playing hard and, and being a cohesive unit. That's what you want to see really coming out of spring ball. Uh, as I said earlier, the great thing about spring, it's all about development. And, you know, we, we have a lot of things that we think are going to happen this spring, but we're not quite sure how they are or who's going to be part of it or or what missing piece is going to be you know the critical uh, part uh, to, to make it all fit together the right way but you know it's going to be it, it's, it's you know I'm hoping that they're going to see a team that really likes being around each other a team that has having fun uh, playing football and, and caring about each other and investing in each other and you know at the same time we need to be able to execute at a, at a pretty high level and, and really, most importantly, be fundamentally sound and play with great effort. If, if we can accomplish those things this spring, then I think we'll be in a great position. All right, it's coming up uh, April 22nd. That's a Friday night. Mark your calendar for that. Honored that you would join us here on our first show. Yeah, thanks for having me. We look forward to having you back. Uh, in fact, in my mind, I had this feature that we could do, and it could, just, it could be the Sunny Dykes Barbecue Tour. <laughs> you know, and we could hit all the great barbecue restaurants in the Metroplex, and I don't know that we would ever get to the end. Yeah, hey, sign me up for it that. It might be a 52-week. Yeah. I, I know there's supposed to be three really good ones in Fort Worth. Yeah. I've already been to Heim, obviously, yep. several times. Yep. I know there's some others that are pretty highly rated. Got to go to the Railhead. Yeah, I got to go to Railhead. Got to go to the Angelo's. You know, there's a couple of other good there's ones. There's some, some new ones that yes. are, yeah, that kind of showed up in Texas, Texas Monthly. Texas Monthly has, uh, what it, Gold, Gold? Goldies, yeah, I think, that's yeah. Panther got... City Barbecue. Panther is City's really good. good. Yes. Yeah, so. I'm excited to get out and do it. So. There's there's six weeks we could do right there. So. Sign me up. All right. <laughs> Sonny Dykes, the head football coach at TCU. When we come back, let's break down that Frog matchup with Seton Hall, round one of the NCAA tournament, when Frogs Today continues in a moment. Crooks, criminals, killers. These stories of crime and punishment in the 21st century Western society as told through the lens of retired Fort Worth vice cop Jake White and investigative journalist John Henry. Catch a new episode every Saturday anywhere you get your podcast or at Signal51Chronicles.com. Signal51 Chronicles is a Roxo Media House production. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Say hello to the water of tomorrow, Richard's Rainwater. Richard's Rainwater is 100% rain, refreshing, renewable, and the only ingredient we use in our water. Why rain? Because everyone deserves access to clean water, and rain is a 100% renewable resource available everywhere. Drink the rain. Save the planet. Shop now at richardsrainwater.com. 
Hey, if you're looking for a fun place to host a company party or large gathering, look no further than TCU Baseball. They invite you to reserve your spot in Home Run Alley. Home Run Alley, the new and improved hospitality area at Leptum Stadium that includes 25 tickets and a covered tent with rental purchase. Additional catering options are available to purchase. Lock in your spot at Frog Alley this season by calling 817-257-3764 or visit gofrogs.com. Back, we come on Frogs today here at the Flying Tea Club Studios. Brian Estridge with you again. And you've heard us talk about frogstoday.com. That's the website that parallels what we're doing here on Frogs Today. And the senior writer for that, really the guy in charge, the big man on campus, is Jeff Wilson. And he joins us uh, right now. We're going to visit with Jeff every week about topics uh, that are top of mind for frog fans right now. And, and obviously, Jeff, first off, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. You're going to let me talk? We will now. That's all right, right. All right. That was it. He does talk. Uh, let, let's dive right into TCU basketball. Uh, the number nine seed taking on Seton Hall. A lot of folks thought this team had played its way into a seven. Yeah. Yet there was also a point where they weren't necessarily a lock for the tournament you don't think i tell you what i think after that that texas game where they were up 10 in the second half and, and lost that that left them four games and they had to win two and the four were tech twice against kansas and at west virginia never won it never won at kansas never won at west virginia so uh, a pretty tall order there just to get to eight eight seemed like the magic number all along like eight conference wins would get you in and, and they did it. You know, they, they beat Tech, they beat Kansas back-to-back -back games. Uh, they, then, you know, they beat, they beat Texas, and I think that's where people thought maybe they, they moved, moved up to a seven. And, uh, you know, so a 7-2 matchup in the second round instead of a potential 9-1. But, um, you know, really, it, it's pretty – I don't want to say it's remarkable because anything can happen in sports. I've been around long enough to know what can happen. But they, they looked pretty – they looked like they were in trouble as late as February 23rd. And you've been following this team all year long. There, there has been something about their makeup. We talked to Jamie Dixon earlier about the character of this club. Uh, and it does feel like there's a little something to this group that maybe TCU teams in, in recent years have been lacking. Well, and, you know, when you look at sports, that really seems to be a big thing that's coming out now. Yeah. Uh, character and, and chemistry and really believing on it. You know, get, getting rid of the, the bad bad seeds, if you will, and 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 building something, a belief in each other, and uh, you can you know, drive each other, pick each other up. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. It really is. Chemistry is a real thing in sports. And uh, I, know, I know this day with an analytics, this age with analytics, people think players are all in vacuum and robots, but they're not, especially, especially these college kids. So, but to, to see that, and, and you can tell, you know, that Eddie Lampkin's so energetic and uh, it, it's contagious, you know, a big dunk and you'll see Emmanuel Miller do something. And, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's good to see, and, and it really does help. It really helps. So your, your piece that's up right now, TCU didn't let the bubble burst. You, you, you talked to a bunch of those players. What would you learn? You know, it, it, they're, they're, they're a confident group. You know, I think you, you can hear that. Uh, I, don't, I don't, maybe some of that's being 19 and 20, but uh, they're also, a, they're an intelligent group. Uh, there's a lot of cohesiveness. You know, like I, I love to listen to Emmanuel Miller talk. He, he always has something that, something really insightful to say yeah. and 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 I think that that can carry over to the to the rest of the team a, a voice like that especially a guy who, who transferred from AM and that is new to the program to come in and, and kind of take on that role I think uh, he he's kind of an uns I, I want to say an unsung hero but you know with Mike Miles getting most of the attention even Damian Bob but Emmanuel Miller really I think makes that thing go if you can allow yourself to think this way and get out of that first round matchup with Seton Hall you you look at this roster uh, dominated by the two guards and Damian Baugh and Mike Miles, and, and you think that maybe this thing is poised for a little bit of a run in postseason if they can get hot. They got Arizona more than likely in round two, which is a, a good team, winners of the Pac-12, but not the dominating Arizona teams we've seen in years past. Yeah, there's no Sean Elliott. Right. You know, they have Benedict Mathurin, who's a nice player, uh, maybe a lottery pick, experienced guard, uh, Zulus Tubulin, who's a, a big man who who could give some some problems matching up for Eddie Lampkin, but you know guards win in the NCAA tournament. You know, experiencing guards and and if, if TCU's guards get hot, we've we've seen them do it. You know, you saw you saw Damian Ba do it against Texas get at Iowa State when he had that fabulous game. Miles is their best player, can score 
you know, he's scored, what, 28 points a, a couple times this year. If the guards get hot, they can do it. But you got to defend. you got to rebound. you got to be ready. There's a lot of X factors. Yes. You know, like you're not going to have Big 12 refs. You're going to have different referees. You're right. going to be in a different venue, and you're playing a late game, and it could get delayed because of what the other th happens with the previous game. So, I mean, there's a lot of in unknowns when it comes to a tournament, but if you keep your head on you and if your guards play good, you're always going to have a chance. You mentioned one other thing I want to bring up real quick about the, uh, this matchup that the Frogs have against Seton Hall, and that was you mentioned the word experience. Experience matters in postseason. Seton Hall is an old basketball team. Yeah, well, and that's you know that's nothing new for for TCU. You know they've they've faced they've been they've been the pups. You know yep. you look at Texas. Texas has a bunch of older older players. Really, it's across the board in, in the conference, right. and um, you know. You, you look at Seton Hall's best player, it's a guard named Jaron Ro Jared Rhodes. Uh, they, they have a couple big guys who have some experience. Uh, Trey Jackson who will go outside and hit some, some jumpers. So they're, they're, but they're, you know, there, there is a chemistry thing involved there too because all these grad transfers transferred in. And I know TCU had a bunch of transfers. That's the way basketball goes this year, this year and going forward with the portal and everything. But um, you, you, you wonder if, if maybe uh, the fact that everybody's new, I know it's a full season now, but you know, now that things are on the line, can you, can you trust the guy you've known for six months as opposed right. to the guy you've known for, for two or three years? Yeah, we'll find out soon enough coming up on Friday night, the Frogs and Seton Hall, uh, the Pirates out of the Big East. All right, I want to turn our attention real quick to uh, frogstoday.com. Mm, yeah. I know it's a, a project that you're proud of. You've been able to land a couple of uh, big time uh, help as far as writers are concerned. Jamie Plunkett, Melissa Tribewasser, both yeah. joining uh, the group. Give us some sense of what folks will get out of that website and, and and what that sense of community is going to be yeah you know it's it's we're going to be really thorough yeah. you know we're not just going to cover football and basketball you know we're, we're, we've really hit baseball hard um, Melissa did a great story on Lauren Hurd yeah. the, uh, the the fabulous women's player um, you know, we do a weekly newsletter where I try to catch up on everything like beach volleyball who had a great weekend rifle who won a national title you know there's a lot of a lot of things out there to cover and we're going to try to do it all you know and and you're not going to get that <clears throat> from every outlet. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're in, in this business now it's, it's clicks and web hits yeah. and, and, and that's where you want, that's where editors want you to spend your time. But we're, we're a TCU focused website and there's more to TCU a lot more than just the, 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 the three revenue sports. And, you know, you look at men's tennis, they won a national title. You look at <clears throat> rifle, like I said, they just won a national title. Right. And I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of good things going on at this this school, and, uh, and we need to tell the stories. Yep. And and I, I think that that you'll get that here. Uh, you're going to get this show, which right. is which is terrific contributions from from Jamie and Melissa and myself. Um, it, it's it's every day. I mean, we're we're not stopping. And, and of course, uh, if you want to follow the game, uh, those two on social media do it better than anyone else <laughs> yeah. on Twitter. You can find out pitch by pitch there uh, from them. The other thing is the Lizard Lounge. Uh, that we want to encourage you to go to. We want you to click on that, uh, learn more about what that community, because you're going to dive in the Lizard Lounge some. I'm going to get into it. Melissa and, and Jamie will be in there, and, and we'll just be kind of talking the uh, the uh, topic du jour, right, to, of what's going yeah, on that sure. day. Sure. I mean, we're we're not going to stir the pot, but no. but we'll mix it up if, 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 if it needs to be mixed. Right. And, you know, that's that's what is great about a, a, a college, covering a college team, is right. that there are fans from – all kinds of years, all different kinds of backgrounds and, and memories of what things were like when they were at school. I was at, I was at TCU from 93 to 97, which right. wasn't exactly the heyday for the football, <laughs> the football program, right. but that's when Billy Tubbs came on. So, you know, I, we have all kinds of different perspectives to, to bring and, and it's, it's interesting and you can get 19 year olds in there and you can get 60 year olds in there. So, uh, it, it, but it is a community and, and we plan to, to, to be in it. We want it to grow. And, and we want to be and we want to be interactive. I yeah. mean, you know, this, this, this is our our little project that we're doing it, but we're doing it for the, for TCU and, and the fans. No question. You go to frogstoday.com to learn more about that. There, you know, one of the thing that Jeff mentioned was the fact that we were going to get to tell the stories and those stories will involve student athletes. And thanks to our friends at the Flying T Club, we have partnered with them. Uh, we're going to be able to tell those stories like no one else with uh, exclusive access to TCU players. You'll learn more about them 
from us than from anyone else. We encourage you to check out frogstoday.com. Big thank you to Jeff Wilson for stopping by, to Jeremiah Donati, the athletic director, and the head coaches Jamie Dixon and Sonny Dykes for our first edition of Frogs Today. We're back with you again next week with more on TCU athletics, including highlights of the frogs in that road trip to San Diego for the NCAA tournament. We'll see you back here for another edition of Frogs Today. Thanks for joining us. Frogs Today is brought to you by the Flying Tea Club, supporting TCU student athletes, and by Richard's Rainwater. Say hello to the water of tomorrow. Frogs Today is a production of Roxo Media House.